done. All right. I may go to copy and leave that one open, paste. We are trying so hard, everyone. Every time we're trying each week to make it. We're so live. We're live. Woo. Right. Well, finally, go everyone. Go ahead and share we're your screen. Give everyone a few minutes to get on over to our website and give everyone a few minutes. So if you have YouTube in the background, please go ahead and mute it. Thank you. We're gonna give a few people, we have four people watching now. We're gonna just give it a moment, let everyone come in as we go through. I moved it over to Steve Russell's title slide. So we're gonna just give like a few minutes for everyone to join us. And then we'll go ahead and welcome everyone to our third episode. Slowly but surely, we are doing a little bit better and figuring this all out. So thank you for watching the Rockport Studio Tour Live. We're here for episode three with Steve Russell, paintings, bronzes, and coconut goblets. Now, Steve is an amazing fellow here in town, and we're so excited to have him aboard. I do want to thank our sponsors. We have First Community Bank right there in Rockport on Business 37. They're so fantastic. Thank you everyone there for supporting the arts in Rockport. Also, I would like to give a big shout out. I have to look here real sec. We want to thank Tito's, Tito's Vodka. Thank you so much for all that you're doing and supporting arts here in Texas. Also, Karen Mella. Realtor, Karen, I love the tagline you gave me. I will read it here shortly, but right now we're just gonna get everything started. Uh, then Prosperity Bank. Prosperity Bank, thank you so much, everyone down there supporting us. Uh, Windway Gallery, Ace Hardware, and Coastline Custom Homes. Thank you so much. And Doc, did you go ahead and share that link? I did, I just told everybody the new link on the old page. Uh, on the old stream to go to the new stream. So they should all have Great. it here shortly. So we have about four or five people watching right now and we're gonna hopefully yeah. get a bunch more here. So we do wanna thank our sponsors. So yeah. that being said, let's go to artist roll call. And as we get right. more people joining us, sorry again for the delay. Uh, Doc, how about you introduce everyone around? Okay, can you go ahead and uh, let me have a uh, co-host and I can, oh, yeah. I can I unmute people. That. <laughs> That's all right. On. Good deal. Great. And Doc Roberts, you get to be co-host. And then we can go to... I'm going to stop share. There go we go. For it. So thank and you so much, everyone. Gallery view. Call. All right. So I'm going to unmute everybody. You all, there we go. And to my right, I have a lady and I don't know her name because it says home on her screen there. Oh, that's Sarah Morrison. Sarah Morrison, all right. Sorry. That's all right. I just, I didn't oh, know your name, hey. so I couldn't remember. <laughs> but, hey, stop. Oh. Hold on just one moment. Um, I'm getting reports from YouTube that they're not seeing it in the chat. So if you could please post it again to the link to the new. You did post something, Steve. I mean, a dog says, welcome to live chat. Remember to see what's up. Okay. There's actually. For some reason, it shows I'm posting it, but it's not. There, I posted it again. Um, I'm posting it too. Rock, there you go. Yep. That's there the old link. More folks. We have 43 people watching us yeah. now, so that's fantastic. Go so, on. Okay. Oh, well, three, three people on the other one. Doc, it's Diane. Can you tell me why uh, my picture is there instead of me? <laughs> Say it again. Why is my picture there instead of me? All right, uh, you, you have, have to, to share your video. Share your video. Oh, yeah. Yes. Right. How about you swipe one direction? I've got to start well, can, getting I, a share uh, video. Sorry, I don't know how to do this. On the other one. 
So, Diane, you have YouTube on in the background. Will you please mute that? No, I do not. Or someone has YouTube on in the background. It is Tanya. It's me? Yeah, do that again. Got it. Got it. There we go. <laughs> I still don't know why I can't. What, Carol, what did you say about swiping for to get my picture off of there? Are you on Carol, your phone? No, I'm on the. Uh, well, then you have to allow your video. On the bottom left, you should see where it says stop video. There's probably a line through it. You have to click it. To oh, okay, okay. Yeah. There it's you go. The right on. There you go. Great. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry for all the technical difficulties here, but really? it's a live show, so that's what you get. <laughs> We're going to go live here. I'm going to start introducing everybody. The lady to the left of me, what was her name again? Sarah. Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Tell everybody what you do here. I'm a great supporter of the Art Center. I'm happy to be here. She is one of our wonderful uh, event chairs and volunteers, so she helped put this all together. Great. And then next to her, we have Barbara. Barbara, go ahead and tell everybody what you do here. Hi, I'm a, um, an artist, visual artist, work, working mostly in oil and cold wax and also in watercolor, and I'm an abstract artist. Okay. And then next, we got Michael. Hi, Michael. How you doing? I'm doing Everybody great. Wood, woodworker. I got some stuff in the background here that uh, I've, I've finished up and do a lot of unique stuff with uh, barrels and uh, other kinds of unique furniture. Great, great. And then next to him, we have Juliana. How you doing? And tell us what you do. Hi, I'm a uh, textile studio artist, and I currently go to a and Oh, right on. She is our youngest artist on the tour. Right now. Great. Awesome. All right. So next to her, we got Anita. Tell us everybody what you do, Anita. Hi, I'm Anita. I have, uh, I'm a painter. I work in watercolor, acrylic, and collage mainly. Great. Glad to be on the tour again. All right on. And then next to her, we have Debbie. Debbie, how you doing? And tell everybody what you're doing. Hi. I'm I do pastel and mixed media painting. Hey, Sarah, tell everybody what you do here. Okay. And then next to Debbie, we have Elsa. Elsa, how you doing? And tell everybody what you do. Good. I'm doing great. And uh, lately, I've been working on acrylics, mixed media, with some collage. Uh, but I also do watercolors and oil. So a big mix. Okay, great. And next to Elsa, we have uh, Jean. Hi, Jean. How you doing? And tell us what you do. I am on the board of the Art Center and also event chair. All right. She's another amazing supporter here in town. Right on. And then next to her, we have Stan Irvin. Hi, Stan. How you doing? Tell everybody what you got. Good. I'm uh, Stan Irvin with Stan Irvin Unique Playworks in downtown Rockport uh, between Austin and Water Street. Um, I'm really looking forward to today. Oh, great. All right. So next to Stan, we have Tanya. Hi, Tanya. How you doing? Tell everybody what you got going on. Hi, I'm Tanya Barnard. I'm a silversmith, and I'm here in my studio in my mess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good deal. Next to her, we have uh, Bonnie. Hi, Bonnie. How you doing? Tell everybody what you got going on. Hi. I'm, I'm um, Bonnie Crowdy, and I'm a painter. Um, I do uh, layered acrylics, and uh, right now I'm working on a lot of collage. All right, good deal. And then next to Bonnie, we have Robin Hazard. Hi, Robin, how you doing? And tell everybody what you got. Well, we hear your lips moving, or we see them, but we don't hear you. <laughs> you have to unclick the mute button. Uh, I'll do that here. Let's see if she's Robin. How about that? There you that go. Works? Right on. That's perfect. Okay. So um, I'm an artist here in Rockport and I do mostly landscape, abstract landscape uh, in oils and pastels. Right on. And next to Robin, we have Vivian. Hi, Vivian. How you doing? Tell everybody what you got. I'm a potter here in Rockport and I'm um, playing in the mud. <laughs> in the mud. All right. Well, who doesn't like that? All right. So next to her, we have, uh, um, is that? Danya. 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 All right. Danya. All right. Good deal. Hi. All how right. you doing? And tell everybody what you got going on. 
Um, I'm a silversmith as well, and working with metal. Okay, right on. And then uh, today's feature artist we have next is Stan Russell. Hi, Stan. How you doing? Tell everybody what you got going on today. Steve. Or Steve. Pretty good. Oh, I'm Steve. 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 Okay. Hi, Mom. We'll get to Steve in Can a minute. Aircon? Makeup. Come over. I need more blush. <laughs> All right. So I'm Steve. We, I do everything. It does Steve, everything. Does everyone remember our last week featured episode guest, Diane Johnson? Yes. Wonder I, and the silversmith. Great. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen one more time. So we are showing, uh, let's see. Uh, And he is an amazing man and a great supporter of the arts here in Rockport. So we, are, I'm going to pass it on over to Steve and uh, Doc. Let's put it on speaker view. Let's have Steve take the show. All right. All right. I appreciate. It. Thank you all for coming in, viewing of both of you. And uh, I think we're out in front of my house where my studio is. It's my wife Cheryl. And uh, you can see everything looks kind of like a post-apocalyptic uh, setting here. As I never throw anything away, including my neighbor's fences that blew down in the storm. So if you will, I'm inviting you to come into the house. We'll view a few images on the wall. And uh, then we'll go out to the studio. All right, right on. If you can see the door, I carved that, whittled it, whittled me a door. And we're in the living room, and there's quite a few images in here. The first one being a portrait I did of Cheryl uh, some time back. And then uh, around the walls, there's some some artwork that are some are prints, mostly original. These are things that I did here around Rockport. And the one there, we just passed by the. Yeah, let's guy. slow down. Can you see it all right? Yes, that's beautiful. Yeah, right on. And, and over here, we'll come over to where there's a ship painting here that's in Cheryl's private collection. That's, uh, wow. What do you like most about LA, that piece? Leaving China. I don't think it's Wuhan. What do you like about it? Like the most about this piece? Oh, what do I like most about it? Yeah. Uh, well, it's just a romantic subject. I've spent years studying square riggers, painting them, and, uh, and ever sets uh, weather conditions, time of day, clarity of the water. You know, it's just, I love painting open sea things. It doesn't have to be clipper ships, but that's one of the ones that, that I like most. So now we'll go out here and take a walk of what I call the walk of shame. What? Why do you say that? Well, it's shameful for what I've done. <laughs> I told the neighbors that everything I did here is flammable. So if you don't like it, we can burn it down. <laughs> Oh wow! Are we are we still on it? This is your backyard. No, this is the front yard. Oh and wow! I created a hanging garden out here. I put up a lot of lattice work. You can see I've got flower pots with flowers. Thankfully, Cheryl has a green thumb. We grow a few peppers. I've got tons of grape vines. So all of you, if you will, come to me for your grape needs here later this year. Here's some ponds that I had built with waterfalls. Uh, the hyacinths are beginning to bloom. So it's a nice place to set in the evening with a beverage of some sort. And then what we're passing by right here used to be what I call a hobbit house. The storm got it, and the only thing that left was a fireplace. But uh, I spent months, almost a year, building this thing out of clay is like adobe and it can't take rain so it melted and the roots go off of it. 
Wow. So that's just a nice outdoor fireplace now. Yeah, it is. And uh, we'll fire our way through some more grapevines. And there had been uh, someone asked about the rabbit. We're passing the, what I call the rabbit hat. And uh, we have these, uh, what they call Flemish giants. And the little gray one on the ground right here is is a baby Flemish giant. You can see the very long ears, big feet, real easy going, dumb rabbits. We have great conversations out here. <laughs> Wow, how many uh, rabbits do you have? We have a bee colony. Which how many means, rabbits do you have? Oh, how many rabbits? I have about 25. Oh. I just love to sit out here and look at their ears. <laughs> they think they're hiding. Now we're Margo wants the, to know if those are grapevines you got. Yeah, uh, those are seedless. I have white grapes and purple grapes. All of them are supposed to be seedless. Well, and I know where here, I'm coming to get some grapes then. All right, good man. Good man, I'll make you a special deal. All I'll right. bring you a bushel and we'll try to fill it up. <laughs> uh, this is a, a nook in my studio. Okay. That uh, is mostly, uh, well, in fact, entirely prints that I've done. Oh All my goodness. I don't know. Does any works. other artist, Juliana, do you have any questions? You're leaning forward all intrigued. We have a question from Victoria Copeland. She wants to know how long it, you did work on all that setting up. Uh, well, it's been years, actually. Years. Uh, it changes every year. When I, I harvest bamboo, I've got a lot of bamboo here. And I love building things out of it. So uh, the previous, like I said, the Hobbit House was created uh, on kind of a bamboo frame. And then it was like uh, Adobe, which was, I call it Cobbs, made a beautiful home, a little room out there, it was a fantasy deal. Steve, like do, you, do you do your own prints of your paintings? Yes, I do. Yeah, these are all what they call your clay prints. And if all those that were tuned in last week saw Diane's studio, how clean and wonderful it was. Well, get ready to throw up because nothing is clean in here. This is <laughs> well, my, we're in the natural habitat. We're in your natural man, habitat. Man. And uh, everything is a uh, stampede around here. But this is where I do the silver and gold, some waxes, some that I just fashion. And uh, we have some examples of that over here on the printer here in a little bit. And then uh, here lately, I've gotten went nuts and started carving wax, making wax figures. And I assume you can see this elephant. I would make some elephant noises, but I'm beginning to lose my, my breath here. <laughs> and there's frogs. Here's a little frog. Ribbit, ribbit. We can all, but anyway, these are waxes that I'll pour into bronze. And uh, then things get a little more complex. And right here, I'll get in just so you see the scale of this. This is a wax of a, of a wow. conquistador or a Spanish. It could be any. It could be French, Portuguese, <laughs> English, Spanish. But we had several centuries of European interface here that sailed into Randy's Bay. And... Uh, so I did this to kind of represent all those people. And you can imagine the Native Americans that were here for arguably 30,000 years. And all of a sudden, one day, a guy like this showed up in a ship. And the Indians stayed hidden. The only time you saw one was when they let you see them. So this represents that. And I was going to call it the European interface. And then next to me, there's a pirate. This one. And this pirate, uh, there was a lot of buccaneers, uh, privateers, and just out and out pirates that roamed around the Gulf and in and out of these uh, shallow inland bays, around the county being one of them. So there was a guy from Havana that was called El Mulado. And so this is my rendition of a man that was from Havana that sailed uh, 
all over the coast, and so he would be of mixed race. And then, uh, oh, what are I your plans for those large wax figures? I, I didn't understand the question. What are your plans for these? Oh, I intend to someday pour these in bronze, which would be a very expensive comeuppance. Do you and have so, abilities to do that on your property? Do you have a, a furnace? Or would you bring it somewhere? No, I would probably take these to a uh, uh, foundry somewhere in Texas. I, it, uh, this is a, when I build these things, I usually build the head first. Okay. And then I build a body that'll support it. And this is going to be my Bronco Indian. Now, somebody wants version. to know if that's a uh, Spanish or Portuguese. Oh, the, the conquistador. He's just he's a generic explorer from the 15th century. And there were there were English, Spanish, Portuguese, all of them, French, especially coming in now. And uh, some years ago, I started a pirate. These are made of wax. And this pirate I was going to do and kind of donate it to the high school if they wanted it. It's going to be a life size, but the storm came and blew all the windows out of my studio and all the doors off and just generally created a heck of a mess in here. And this pirate kind of got beat up real bad, and I've never rebuilt it past that. And just for those of you at home, when he says the storm, he means the Hurricane Harvey from 2017. Yeah. yeah. And then I've done some other waxes that I just did for the heck of it, and this one up here the head will be of a of a, a monk that traveled with those european explorers that usually uh kind of wrote things down and wrote a history of it all and then this would be a crock with child and uh, the mother i'm doing right now in clay speaking of clay there's an old friend of mine that died here a few years ago was a singer songwriter his name is guy clark and this is guy in clay right here and uh so i don't know what i'm going to do with that but his sister said well it looks like him and she came over and helped me critique the thing of uh, you know i'm not finished with it but it, you can kind of tell who he is if you knew guy Clark. and uh, you have to kind of keep a sack over those things and keep spraying it with water because they dry out uh, disproportionately or crack then uh, I have lots and lots of paintings, uh, you know, hanging on the walls in here that uh, are originals mostly. And lately I've neglected painting, not totally, but I've had to do some, uh, some uh, commissions that I needed to do to to sponsor all this foolishness. But you can see there's a lot of images in here, mostly Texas, hill country, coastal, uh, the shrimping industry with the Louisiana boats that come in. And uh, so anyway, these are all international. Some of it in Italy, around Europe and places. I love Venice, painted there quite a bit and then Rome. And uh, then uh, there was a period of time when I lost my mind and decided I wanted to blow glass. So I built a hot glass shop. And these are some of the uh, chandeliers that are inspired by uh, Dale Chihuly. I studied with one of Chihuly's uh, students. His name was Tony Hohola. He's a Native American out in uh, Taos, New Mexico. So yeah, we- right on. We blew glass like crazy. And at first, everything I blew looked like it crawled out of a primordial sea. My vases wouldn't stand up without being propped up with something. And a friend of mine asked, "Is it cost more if you buy something that doesn't have to have an oyster shell underneath one edge to keep it from falling over?" But I finally got the hang of it and began to blow all kinds of different forms. And then my doc, I was doing a lot of flame work some examples over behind it. 
And uh, so anyway, these chandeliers of all things, if you can imagine being in here during Hurricane Harvey, when these windows blew out and the doors blew off, these things had to be going wild. I'm just glad I wasn't in here to see it. And then we also, not unlike Diane, I have a little bit of a sewing machine addiction. I, I can't help myself. I keep buying sewing machines. And this outfit that my wife is wearing right now is one of my creations. And I hope you'll forgive that sometimes I sew the pockets on upside down. And maybe one leg's a little longer than the other, but she loves me and forgives me. And oh, I love it. Modeling some of my gold and silver work. Oh, look, can you hold the camera for a moment so we can see? Yeah. Very and nice. Uh, necklaces yeah. that happen to, in this case, match her outfit. Ah. And her eyes, of course. Oh, Cheryl, you're beautiful. Thank you. Thank you too much. Thank you. Lucky man. There's no question about it. Uh, oh, yeah. Cheryl, uh, we've laid out a little bit of jewelry here that uh, there's a whole lot more than that. Ooh. But uh, you can kind of get the idea. Course, so just to let folks different. know, jewelry is a relatively new area of interest for uh, Steve. And he will be participating in our Silver Meltdown event in November. That's where several other of our... Uh, uh, of our silversmiths, including Danya, Tina, and Diane, will all be able to participate. And we have a fashion show, and it's so much fun. So, can we see that jewelry one more time, please? Thank you. Wonderful. Now that we've seen Hi. a little bit of what's going around. I want to open it up to all the other artists. You guys have questions for Steve? Yes, I do. Hey, it's Steve. It's Debbie. Um, yes, Debbie. I'm, I'm wondering, I mean, you've, you've done all these. I have two questions, actually. One, the first one, you do all this 3D and different kinds of things, and then you always come back to painting, too. Do you think that the, the 3D work and working in the other media, does that have an effect on your painting? Do you think it has any, any effect on, on how you paint or how your paintings change? If I understand the question, uh, probably uh, I go like pastel, oil, watercolor, and any other medium I can think of, that whenever I do it, I just run to the wall with it just trying to see what potential can be achieved. And then I go full circle, like when I leave oil painting is kind of where I came into this dance. And then I've come back to it. And uh, it usually, I find that I'm a stronger designer or an artist because of the absence of studying other, other forms. One of the things that uh, I've been doing here lately and it's featured today is the goblet famous coconut goblet and coconuts are notoriously hard to center because they lob around so when I have a full coconut and I put it on the lathe uh, I tend to have flying coconut so if anybody ever comes over give me some advance notice and I'll turn the lathe off so we don't get hit by, by an errant coconut oh, it makes good. a neat goblet I love drinking out of it Great. I'm going to drink some right now. So I'm going to ask if you're, you're, uh, your cameraman, just if you can make sure that you slowly move, we're getting a little dizzy. So you could just slow the movement on the camera. All right. We can do that. I, Thank I you. Yeah. I'm okay. My I'm going to drink question. this very slowly. <laughs> My Debbie, other second question. question. Yeah, I'm still asking questions, Steve. Hey, um, we've known each other about 40 years. Can you believe that? I know it flies, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And over those years, you've done, you've done portraits, you've done uh, Native American, you've done, I've seen you do just about every subject matter. I wonder if you have a favorite and if you have one that's most challenging. My most favorite is any uh, aged 
face that has a lot of character in it. I, I tend to really enjoy doing that. So you get down in a kind of a third world position sometimes, such as Mexico, and find people that have been a little less fortunate. They've spent their life out trying to make a living in the fields and the sunlight, and it reflects on their faces. So I like that that people that have so much written on their face, it can be a child even, and no matter what the ethnic group, but I, uh, I just love doing them all, but especially the older ones. Great. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about that piece behind you? All right. Uh, that is, uh, I've been doing a little bit of a series of lighthouses here lately that were an experiment of fantastical, you know, fantasy lighthouses. And I use the word uh, hobbit again. It's like if the hobbits built a lighthouse, it would probably be leaning and twisted around and all kinds of ways. So I've been studying doing that. And this particular painting is fashioned after a lighthouse. I believe it's in the mouth of the harbor in Bainbridge, Maryland. And it's in rock. So I changed it from rock to wood and this lighthouse couldn't possibly exist it would fall over within two weeks there here's uh, one of the studies that i was if you can see that all right of uh lighthouse it's real crooked and back and forth so it's just out of my imagination and this one behind me is uh i've got a lot of birds that are kind of it's kind of like a crossroads and that's what i was going to name it but i've had uh, some problems with how I'm going to use the light in here. And so I've got quite a bit more work to go, but uh, it's been an exciting trip to get to the point where I am now. Steve. Oh, oh go ahead, Stan. Steve, could you talk a little bit about your uh, formal background or are you entirely self-taught? Um, how, did, how did you get started? Yeah. I uh, started as a young, in my early teens, trying to do things that were too complex. And it was very frustrating that there was a man that later became my teacher and mentor, and his name was William Briegel. And a man in Fulton, had Jack Sanders, had bought several of his paintings, and they were hanging in the lobby of a hotel, the Sand Dollar Hotel. So I used to ride my bicycle, which is about five or six miles, a couple of times a week to go in there and just sit and stare at those paintings of ships and, you know, the uh, coastal sailing vessels. And then I'd go home and try to replicate it. And it turned out that I just wasn't skilled enough at that time to do it. So. Uh, I ended up studying with this man. He took me under his wing for several years and I studied with him uh, until such time as I went off in the military. And then I kind of got exposed to uh, quite a few West Coast painters uh, around Laguna Beach. And then in San Diego, there was a Frederick Whitaker who was a very noted watercolorist and another guy named uh, Robert Landry. So I studied with those guys and then I came home and uh, thought that I was ready to go. So I began painting on my own and uh, I ended up studying with a guy from New York named Wolf Kahn. And a, a friend sent me a note here just a week ago that he had died at the age of, I think, 92. He was quite a character. But anyway, he, uh, he, made me get out of the box that I was in and uh, kind of loosen up and do a uh, more impressionistic type thing. So I've bounced around, bounced back and forth off the walls for several years, kind of trying to ignore in large part what I was taught to try to find my own, my own reach, you know. And uh, so it's been, a, a, you know, I'm now 73 years old and uh, I've always tried to stay loose and the word painterly is banded about an awful lot. So I've tried to achieve the 
that painterly effect that was most best exemplified by uh, John Singer Sargent. He set the bar up real high. And so uh, a lot of my paintings now are, are more in the mode of what Singer did. Sergeant, I mean. Does that answer your question, I think? I think so. Uh, hey, one of the things that I really enjoyed you talking about was that when you were experimenting in all these different materials, you were in glass, you're doing metal jewelry, you're doing bronze and wax, you're painting, you're watercolor, drawing, you have all these different media. And as you were describing your glass work, you're saying everything looks like the same. What did you say when you first were blowing glass? That it all looked the same? Oh, yes. Uh, <clears throat> it was all looked the same in the sense that it was awful. Oh. You know, the, I couldn't uh, blow a symmetrical form outside of uh, like Christmas ornaments. Those were pretty easy. And that's how I, I could afford this outrageous gas bill that I had because I built a hot glass shop. And it took me almost three years and an awful lot of our resources, economic resources to do it. And finally, when I got it to go and we were almost broke, I thought, what have I done? You know, and I was trying real hard to blow wonderful things that would hang in the Smithsonian. You know? So it was just, it took a while to begin to get uh, enough experience to settle down and start uh, uh, creating things that were, were symmetrical. That was, that was, there, and then there were technical things. I'd put a piece in an annealing oven and it would melt. You know? And sometimes when I got it out, people were fighting over buying it because it was real abstract. And I thought, no, I'm fixing to throw it away. And they said, like hell, I want to buy that. And so I was grateful to get to, uh, <laughs> you know, it was uh, yeah. by accident. But I just stayed at it. And finally, it began to come around to the class, classic type uh, designs. What I like about it, though, is that you seem to get into all of these different media and it doesn't, you don't seem to have any hesitation about exploring or venturing out or you're not sticking with the tried and true. How, how do you take those risks? Uh, well, to tell you the truth here lately, it's YouTube is going to be the death of me. I go on there and look at something and I see something else. I think, man, that looks interesting. And, and uh, so I, uh, when we were talking about the flame work, you know, the seashells. Is that glass? That's yes. glass, yeah. Oh, wow. And, uh, shells. Fantasy type things. So, so can you see that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that was really fun. I, I, I blew hundreds, if not thousands, of seashells. Each one was different. Eve, you said yeah, that man. you were working more in kind of a surrealist um, type of inspiration, like uh, the lighthouse behind you. Do you um, see yourself working kind of in that realm in other types of media that you work with? I do. I. Uh, I just try to uh, be my own person. Uh, scratch one of those shells. And just... <laughs> oh, oh, you did call it abstract. You could probably sell it for more. <laughs> yeah, put it back in the kneading oven and melt it. Thank you. Uh, is my hair still combed? Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's what I was fishing for. <laughs> I, I get thirsty. I got to take another drink out of my coconut dog. Sure. Well, we're approaching about the time where we start. I hear that you are being very generous and willing to give away something today. Would you mind showing us that item? I certainly will. Uh, Cheryl's going to get it right now. And, and she selected, she oh, she she selected, selected it. that piece. And... Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it was out of her personal collection, so it was like pulling teeth to get my hands on what? it. What? No way. Yeah, but she has a lot in her personal collection. All right, can you if see you can just that hold that right? still so we can see. Let it focus. 
Oh, wow, that's some great texture. Thank you. I have a question. Ooh, Danya. Yes, Steve, do you alloy all your own metal? Yes, I do. Wow. Uh, these. And what does these, that mean to us non-metal workers? All right. Uh, <clears throat> let's say gold. I like to work in 24 karat gold, but it's almost like lead. You know, it, you can't polish it. You can shine it a little bit. So I will alloy it down to like 22 karat or 20 karat. And then with silver, all my silver work is 999. It's fine silver. So every once in a while, when it turns out that I have some other something or another that's sterling silver, and I melt it, well, sometimes I'm careless about putting it in my crucible with the fine silver. So it backs down a little bit. But uh, never anything lower than sterling, which is 925. But I buy silver now all from uh, a metal supplier that is all pure metal when I get it. And it's in what they call casting shot, little BBs. And this particular one, I had built a silver necklace that I braided with silver wire. And I cut it up in pieces and uh, applied it to a ring that I had built while it was still flat and then just beat the shenanigans out of it and then added some silver shock over it and silver soldered all that together and then face it, fashioned it into a, a ring. But if you can see through there, this is the silver shot, like buck shot. Oh, wow. So you're doing a, like a lost wax casting for that? I do on some of them. This particular ring that we're showing right now is like uh, would have been maybe in the 15th century. Uh, I uh, melted the silver and poured it on the, almost on the ground and then ran it through a mill and then beat it with a hammer until it was the right thickness and then cut it out into a strip and then uh, wrapped it around a mandrel and silver soldered it and then put it on the mandrel and made it round and that's what we have here. Some people think that this had to be a lost wax, but it's not. Although I do a lot of that, especially with gold. What size is that? Uh, I think it's a seven. Size seven. Ooh, all right. Well, as we start, we're going to ask everyone, our audience in the chat, we have just about 70 viewers right now. Uh, if you all would type a number between 1 and 80 into the chat box. And Doc, if you could bring up your screen, if you'll share your screen, and yeah. we'll do the, the drawing of the number of who will win the lovely Steve Russell, Cheryl Russell ring. All right, we're getting our first numbers in. All right, that's not the... Uh... Number eight's not the number yet. I'm gonna give everybody about 30 seconds or so to get their numbers typed into the chat. Once again, if you are on YouTube and you have a YouTube account, go ahead and log in and you can watch the, the uh, Rockport Art Center live as well as type in the chat to the right and you can uh, log in and join the chat and ask questions of all your uh, favorite artists that are gonna be featured in the next uh, few months. Also, if everybody would go down to on the bottom right-hand side of YouTube, there's a little subscribe button. If you'll just hit that little subscribe button, you'll be notified every time we go live. And then that way, you don't have to worry about it. And then you can be notified when we go live every single time. And um, we also, will work out. We will work out our going live feature. I'm sorry. I am yes. bringing some expert support on that one. Keep going, Doc. Yeah. And then what we'll do is uh, also there's a little thumbs up. If you'll hit that little thumbs up button, that lets us know that you like it. And then we can get some feedback and stuff like that from everybody. So here we go. All right. We got quite a few numbers in. I'm going to go back to this uh, screen share page here. Where is it at? There we go. All right. And I feel like we're screens within screens within screens. <laughs> Very yeah, meta wow. here. Yeah, oh let me uh, get oh, out oh, of that. You're, you're, you just keep doing it. <laughs> there we go. 
<laughs> there it is. I got it. I got it. All right. So here we are. Everybody sees the um, screen and I'm going to hit the generate button right now. Here we go. Number 11. Who's Number 11. That is Plankton Pursuits. Yay! Plankton Pursuits. Whoever you are, please email me. I'm going to put in the public comment or in the chat my email. If you would please email me and we will have, I will put you in touch with Steve and he will get you your ring. I would ask that you take a picture of yourself with the ring and send it to me so that we can share it on social media and let you see your bling. That would be fantastic. And like uh, Doc Roberts said, please, like our video, that little thumbs up, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. The more su subscribers we have, the more people that view, the more the people that view, the more our artists are going to be able to promote themselves, Rockport, and what a great center we have called the Rockport Center for the Arts. So before we uh, take off, Steve, is there anything else? Uh, let's uh, unshare your screen, Doc. I can't awesome. think of a thing. I just enjoyed very much uh, visiting with everybody and thank you. And uh, looking forward to the next episode. Yes, the next episode will be uh, featuring Anita Devil. Anita, how about you wave and turn off One. your microphone? Turn on your microphone. No. All right. Well, Anita will be our featured artist next week. There we go. Oh, there oh, you yeah. are. Thank Say you. Hi, Anita. Anita is an amazing artist here in town. She has a, a weekly Monday uh, critique group that meets at her studio. She has some classes and she also features some lovely artists that come in from out of town. So we're so happy to have her here with us next week. It's gonna be wonderful. Just to let you know, I just got something in the chat that we have a visitor, we have a viewer from the UK watching us right now. So I we are, we have gone international. <laughs> but we're going to do that um please check back on our facebook page and i will be developing the rockport studio tour website a little bit better and i will be sure to share that on our channel and playlist if your friends miss this episode it will be available on our youtube channel next um beginning tomorrow and we are going to have some more announcements next week uh during anita's show uh, about how you can access some of this work, how you can purchase this work. We're gonna try to put some things in line so we can connect you with our artists virtually and connect it um, and literally. So you can take some art back. Steve is breaking out his guitar. Are you gonna play us out, Steve? If you do, you gotta, you gotta. <laughs> Thank you everyone for watching us today. If you And I wanna thank our sponsors one more time. First Community Bank, Prosperity Bank, Karen Mella, Realtors, Tito's Vodka, Coastline Custom Homes, Windway Gallery, and Ace Hardware. Thank you so much everyone. And everyone wave, say bye. We'll see you next week. All right, sounds good.